just drop them right here and they walk over and call 911. Yeah. Sure. And this is what's never explained. Some of the Russians were going out through Dubai to make it all the way into Cabo. There's a radio up here. Here we have the trail going right up, and this is the border. Wait, this guy made the East LA video that you watched? Yeah, wait, is this the same guy? Good morning, guys, here in Yuma, Arizona, right on the border. Isn't this like a good, he, oh no, what the fuck? Wasn't he like, wasn't he like a chill ass dude? What the fuck, when did he become this guy? Border with Mexico. And in recent times, there's been a huge influx of migrants coming over this border. But what is the situation like now? What is it compared to other times in Yuma history? So today we're gonna to meet with Sheriff Wilmot, who's been in office here for decades, who's gonna walk us through his perspective and his understanding of the situation. Let's do this. All right, Sheriff, where are we going? Well, we hit the remote part first, and then we'll get back into town. Or we can do vice versa, whatever you want to do. Where's the most? Yeah, he was like super kind to the Bangladeshi immigrants in old Polish neighborhoods in Detroit, so I'm like kind of shocked. It seems dude is a super libertarian, but really, but does really good at letting people just talk. He made a bunch of real sussy videos around COVID, but otherwise it's cool. Yeah, I remember him like being a little weird about COVID, but like ultimately if he's a super libertarian, he should be open borders, right? If like real libertarians are all about freedom of travel, freedom of movement. More interesting part. Well, it's all interesting. Okay, let's do remote. Yeah. <laughs> That's where all the people are dying. So you might like libertarianism is antithetical with uh, you know border cops. Libertarians are not supposed to like cops; they're supposed to hate cops. That's the state's monopoly on violence being expressed in this way. But border cops—that's like two values that libertarians uh, supposedly hold that uh, is violated here. So I don't get it. My county. 5,500 square miles. I got 95 deputies that patrol all of this. Okay. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The cartels have designated locations along the border. They allow people to cross. Then the okay. cartels also have designated areas that they control where their narcotics come across. And those that do not want to be apprehended are also guided through. Anybody that crosses the uh, the border here is paying anywhere from 6000 per person up to 15000 It all depends on what country you came from. So those that are coming from Russia, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, the Ukraine, they're paying more to get here. You're getting, Why the fuck? You're getting migrants from that part of the world. Oh, yeah, 140 different countries. You figure this last federal fiscal year in Yuma County, just on the river corridor, but Ukraine, brother, I don't get why they would come through the border. I mean, I feel like some of these places are, you know, they let you they let you come in. There are over 310,000 people that were apprehended and processed by Border Patrol agents. And then out in the eastern part of my county in the remote desert, there's over 28,000 getaways that they know of for sure. There could be more. That's the impact for, for Yuma Sector Border Patrol, which is either the second or third smallest Border Patrol sector in the whole. Hey, or Mountain Dew, brother! Mm -hmm. So they're running maybe 800 agents that had to handle over 310,000 people. There's the border right there. Where? Oh, the, the, the fence, fence is up there. Yeah. What I was told in South Texas was the fence isn't going to stop anyone. 32-foot fence 33 foot ladder whatever right? right but it makes it easier for customs and border protection to deal with it because they can set up the infrastructure on the french right. uh, on the fence you can see where people are all pinching together to go over right. or whatever it's right is that your it's understanding a deterrent it it's, it's a, a deterrent. deterrent and yes they do use ladders but ergo you have cameras you have sensors but it does slow down that criminal element so that border patrol can actually it doesn't even do that. It's just easier to apprehend them. The goal is to, listen, the goal is to basically get the undocumented migrant workers to be caught and, and relegated into slave labor within the immigrant detention system, sorry, overflow facilities, rather than allow them to come into the country and work as undocumented laborers 
under private facilities for pennies on the fucking dollar. Right? Like, that's it. That's the main difference here. That's the main... That's the main difference here. That's why the, the wall works. The wall doesn't actually create safety. It doesn't even create a presence of a deterrent. These people have walked thousands of fucking miles in some instances. They don't give a fuck about a wall, bro. They're going to they're gonna sidestep that wall. There's What this guy is doing is nothing uh, different than slave labor. Yeah, it's a funnel. Exactly. Actually respond and get there to be able to apprehend it. And it keeps individuals from impact. Which is ironic because the majority of uh, the majority of undocumented immigrants at this stage are not even border crossers; they're visa overstayers. So you're literally just funneling the poorest of the poorest migrants in most uh, in the worst economic circumstances, and you know turning them into full blown institutionalized slaves. our farmers when most people hear Yuma Arizona they think a desert what you need to understand is Yuma County supplies the whole of the United States 90% of your winter leafy yeah like Elon Musk is a fucking visa overstayer straight up Elon Musk was a visa overstayer but he had the financial status to be able to uh you know protect himself from any kind of legal scrutiny he was he was able to game the books. He greens. When you have wow. these gaps in the fencing that we understand is what? Yuma County supplies the whole of the United States, 90% of your winter leafy greens. When you have wow. these gaps in the fencing that were stopped, it's just an open area and it funnels the cartels. This is one of the crossing points is right down here. And there's where it impacts our farmers because those individuals were going into those fields and defecating and the trash was being left there. So where we're at here is Morales Dam. Obviously, United States, Mexico, right across the river. Cartels designated this as one of the crossing points. So you can see along that where that pickup is at, there's a little road that goes down. Okay. So they get off the, at the airport, Mexicali, take the Uber, bus, Get, cab, get off at the airport. Yeah, they all fly into Mexicali. Everybody From, that's coming here is flying in. They're not doing the long, hard journey no, through the none country. No, these folks are doing that. They're flying in. Some of these countries, they have to manipulate airports according to whether or not that country requires a visa. Some of the Russians were going out through Dubai and, and other countries to make it all the way into Cabo. They'd spend a couple weeks in Cabo, and then they would fly into Mexico City, and then into Mexicali. So all these different 140 plus countries, they're all educated enough to figure out how to get from airport to airport to airport. So 310,000 have crossed this area of the river corridor from here, between here and about eight miles. You guys why down is here. That, why do you say it like it's shocking? They're educated. Yeah, yeah. Of I mean, they know, yes, they want to come into America, so they figured out how to do it. What the fuck? He's like, he's like talking about undocumented immigrants like they're fucking, like, like they're a dog you just trained how to close the door. You know what I mean? We're putting storage containers, right? Right, the governor. To, to block the, the, uh, the gaps here? Right. They pulled all the containers out because, finally, this administration has decided that they need to finish this portion because of the, the amount, sure amount, and volume of people coming in here illegally. So this fence is going to be built here soon? They're supposed to be contracted out to put in the rest of this gap, but not all gaps. You know, oh, yeah, brother, about and doing the right thing. I'll show you that out. So they just walk off the bus, walk down that little trail right there, uh -huh. come across right here. So you're, you're not even getting wet. And then who gets them here on the, the Arizona side? Border Patrol. That's so interesting. So they, they want to get caught. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, it's what we call give-ups. These are individuals that those countries won't take them back. So like the, Ru the Russians won't take them back? No. Okay. So once they, 
claiming asylum because they're coming from a country of violence. Okay, so once they get in, Customs Border Protection right. takes them in, right. processes them, Correct. and then they have an asylum court hearing? Well, they're given a notice to appear wherever they're going in the U.S. You gotta have a sponsor. Okay. So, and I picked up pieces of paper showing addresses within the interior of the United States, Wisconsin, New Jersey, where that's where they're going. What's your understanding of the backlog right now when they have to appear before, in that state? Before this administration came along, the backlog, as we understood it, was anywhere from seven to 11 years because they had over 11 million illegals that were still pending hearings. He's going the other way, he's going There's to Mexico. A, oh, there oh. we go. Jesus. Oh! Holy shit. <laughs> Otto! <laughs> okay, the one guy went through the gap. This guy's swimming right now. Tranquilo, tranquilo, calma. God, I love watching fucking cops run, dude. They're, it, it's just, just like, that will never get old. Just went into the reeds. Literally, guys, we've been down here just a 10 minutes or so. Wow. He's, he's still walking that way. Is he on land? No, he's on the water. Okay. Yeah, I'm watching him. You gonna get the other one? Just two? Just two. Okay. So I thought it would have been a nighttime thing, but it's it's all time. All day huh? long, every day. So these are ones that are the getaways. So this guy will go back, hide in the reeds, wait yeah. a while, mm -hmm. and then... Yeah, and he'll come back. He doesn't want to get caught, though. No. Why doesn't so, he want to get caught? Probably because he's either prior deport or he's uh, got a criminal history. You just heard him laughing. He thinks it's funny. It's all a game. It's just cat. Yeah, nice. it yeah. is funny. Looks like a pretty big jump he's about to do. Ah, oh, not too bad. It's hard to explain, guys. A very surreal part of the country. And until you see it firsthand, I know the video does a bit of capturing it. But um, here's the opportunity, and many people want the opportunity. Very understandable. Why? Why wouldn't you want to go where the opportunity is? I mean, I don't, like I've always said, I don't, I would do. Yeah, see, this guy's like, he's an interesting guy. The same thing if I was uh, living in poverty or in a terrible situation, I would go, I would go for the U.S. But as an American, I want the legal process to be respected. Like, bro, what he just said right there automatically puts him at like, a, a more humane and more empathetic point of understanding than like 75% of fucking conservatives, okay? I know he talked about the legal process, uh, it must be respected or whatever, but like conservatives regularly don't even acknowledge the prior part. They literally claim that these guys are coming over to like rape American women. You know what I mean? Like that's in the minds of conservatives. They're like, yeah, they're here to both be lazy and, and steal money from the federal government, which whatever the fuck kind of money they're getting from the federal government, who knows, and also steal the jobs of every American and also uh, have sex with uh, their wives. Like, that's literally the mentality. They don't even think about it like, oh, these guys are poor and they're fucking trying to make a better, uh, uh, you know, future for themselves. This is just the start of the eco-fascism. Conservatives going to shift from, oh, they're not following the law, so we should deport to and are not going to be, we have limited opportunity and resources, us versus them. I mean, they do that already. They do that. We have limited opportunities and limited resources us versus them. They already do that. What do you think uh, they took our jobs looks like? Well, and we should know everyone who's coming in our country, right? He's coming up beside you. He's like, you shut the fuck one, up. Leave the pond. Yeah, he's going. He's already over and working his way up towards the other side. You sprinted pretty hard there. I did, I'm out of breath. I need to start like uh, running. <laughs> did you catch the other one? Got, yeah, the second one was up by the train tracks. Oh, was he? Okay. I put you down as the, uh, your sister. <laughs> well, at least you caught the one that was getting away. 
Yeah, I get it, but I mean, let me ask you something. What yeah. what's the threshold? Oh, yep. dealing with it. Right. There, this country there is, cannot, there is a threshold. We of cannot afford to take care of all these other countries' issues. Right. I mean, uh, right now you look at the massive amount yep. of money being spent each and every day day by this administration. You know what's funny about that? It's all about where you spend the money. These guys are not a burden on the system. They are literally, without them, there is no system. American agricultural production falls apart without a steady flow of undocumented immigrants. The restaurant industry low-key kind of fell apart during COVID when they had such strict lockdown measures in place. Like, half of our fucking, half of the, the you know, background staff that you never see, not the server staff, but like busboys and shit in every fucking restaurant is undocumented. You know what I mean? The idea that like, yeah, construction, food processing, poultry, all manner of agricultural production, and even in the, on the service side, so many, so many, of this indu- so many of this industry is literally fucking backed by undocumented labor that are getting paid nothing and under horrifying, gruesome workplace uh, conditions. Now, on top of that, they also pay taxes. So they are literally not a burden, but a benefit to the system. These stupid fucking idiots can't comprehend that, though. And the real way to solve this problem of depressive uh, wages isn't by uh, stopping the, the inflow of immigration, which they don't, by the way. Great justification for undocumented labor. No, that's not a justification for undocumented labor. Hold on. Okay? It's not. If you want to, as workers, make sure that you have better wages and better workplace conditions, document the undocumented laborers, and allow all workers across the board, regardless of ethnic background, creed, nationality, to organize in their workplace and demand higher percentages of the profits that they're generating for people who will never touch the factory assembly line or never see how agricultural production occurs. That is how you legitimately improve wages and workplace conditions. And yet, for some reason, people don't see it like that. They see it as a pie that is uh, uh, where the, the slice that they are able to get is getting smaller and smaller. And then they see immigrants coming in and taking up even uh, you know what remains of the crumbs of that pie. If America truly wanted to eviscerate undocumented labor, and I've said this before, okay, instead of relying on it, they would punish the businesses that routinely straight up scout and farm undocumented communities and move them around like Purdue, the chicken factory. But they don't. The Customs and Border Patrol, or ICE, is seen as a tool of the state that helps depress wages. That these places will utilize, like Purdue, Tyson Chicken, will quite literally utilize when immigrant laborers, undocumented immigrant laborers, turn around and demand back pay that they are owed. Or want to bring up the fact that they are being sexually assaulted at the factory. When that happens, all of a sudden you have an ice sweep the next day because all they have to do is pay the federal government a minor, minuscule fine and their profit margins are still tremendously fucking high regardless of that. It is infinitely cheaper for them to just get a new wave of undocumented migrants because there's always a steady inflow and pay the fucking price than to even pay the back, uh, the back pay that they are owed. This is how this system works. And if you truly wanted to curtail undocumented immigration, you would punish the corporations that hire undocumented migrants willingly, deliberately, knowingly. But that's not what the immigration laws were created for. 
exclusion laws were not created to create like a, like a white ethno state. They were created so you could have a two tier labor, uh, a two tier immigration process and have a steady flow of a permanent underclass. That's it. Donate all your money, Hassan. I already do to your mother, dude. I take her out on dates every fucking night. You know how costly that shit is? Administration dealing with this. So you look at one tent to house oh. individuals, just to sleep in it, is about four hundred four point five million dollars a month. Okay. What do, you, what do you mean? One, one tent. Oh, one of these big tents. Facilities? One of these big tents that you see on the news. Four point five million. Now the other tents are about six point five million because that's where they have to cook the food and feed the folks. And then you look at the fact that they got laundry services so they can get their laundry done. And the fact that Border Patrol each and every day has to buy food and clothing to clothe these individuals. When does it stop? It's 16, 15, 16 million a month for HHS just to deal with the unaccompanied children that come across. That's your tax dollar and mine. But we don't have any problems in this country, so we have plenty of money to spend. <laughs> well, if you live in a bubble, you don't have a problem. Wow, man. He just, he just explained how fucking cheap it is to take care of immigrants while simultaneously making it seem like it is a, or treating it like it's a luxury to like feed and give clothing and shelter to undocumented migrants that they've apprehended only to place inside of privately owned immigrant detention centers where they will be enslaved and forced to work for a dollar a day. Here's a better way to solve the problem. Streamline the process of immigration for migrant workers especially, allowing them to come into the country freely. But of course, if you did that, then they have rights. They have legal rights and legal representation beyond uh, just like uh, helping them stay inside of the country. And therefore, it's much harder to fucking oppress them and use them as a permanent underclass. So you can't do that because the government works at the behest of corporations. The government... When they do this shit, they utilize white supremacy, right? When they do, like, exclusion acts, when they do the Bracero program, the justification for said programs is white supremacy. But the main purpose is not white supremacy. The main purpose is, again, you got to go back to the material conditions. You got to look at the fucking relations of the means of production. The main purpose is to protect the bottom line of corporations. That's it. That's it. The government the problem or the solution? I'm so confused. The government can be the problem, and it often is, instead of the solution, which it can be. But it routinely is not. Dog, my merch is already on the way. I did not pay for extra fast shipping, Lamal. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Merchandise is already uh, pre-ordered this time, so like it immediately ships. But how do you expect a country with limited resources to just let immigrants in? Which country are you talking about? Because if you're talking about the United States of America, it does not have limited uh, resources to let immigrants in. It has a tremendous amount of resources. And I already just told you, I already just told you that, like, it is literally far better for the country as a whole to allow undocumented migrants to come in as documented laborers. That's the main problem because undocumented migrants aren't like uh, a burden on the, the uh, robust welfare state. There is no robust welfare state, by the way, of course. They're not. They're coming here to work. but <laughs> we deal we with reality all, we got it here. All figured out here. No issues in America. The video you're watching right now is 55 minutes long, which means that three quarters of the original footage didn't make the cut, either because it was too long or too controversial to be on YouTube. This happens quite often. Aren't they paying their bills? There are things in law. 
I'll leave my Patreon link in the... So many coming across and they were going out into these farm fields and defecating and littering. The county had to put up these porta johns at certain locations so that they wouldn't go out in the fields and contaminate the farm fields. Why is the county having to pay that bill? Right. The federal government has already said that immigration is their sole responsibility, right? They've said that. Why aren't they paying their bills? There are things in law enforcement called ethics, integrity. I don't get that out of Mayorkas at all. Okay, and for those that don't what? understand who Mayorkas I thought he was about to say, there's things in law enforcement that are called ethics and integrity, but I don't understand it at all. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by ethics. Bro. Let me put it into perspective. Because this guy is not already op this guy is not operating under the basis that these people are human. He's not even operating under the basis that these people are animals. Because I feel like he would be probably kinder to like a dog that he sees on the side of the road than fucking, you know, undocumented people crossing the border. So, let me explain it to you. Of course they put toilets there. Okay? The fuck do you mean? You got a shit do you have toilets at the fucking airport? Do you have toilets at the train station? Do you have toilets at border crossing? Yeah. You're going to have toilets at the regular points of entry. The entire point is, these guys wouldn't have to do this if they could legally do it. You think someone who has the legal capabilities of getting into the country just still goes, nah, I'm going to cross the border illegally. No, the fuck they won't. So, that's the main problem. And actually... If migrant laborers could easily come into the country, it would make the Border Patrol's job much easier. If the Border Patrol's job was to truly apprehend criminals, then you could actually apprehend fucking criminals for once instead of law-abiding abuelas and their fucking kids. But because America does not allow law-abiding abuelas and their fucking kids to come into the country for a better future for themselves, okay, if they're coming from a poor nation, you have literally sex traffickers drug dealers, and the law-abiding abuelas, which make up the overwhelming majority of people that are coming over the border, by the way, not the fucking drug traffickers and shit, coming together, and then you treat all of them in the same way. It's so stupid. And for you saying some of them are convicted felons, that's why they don't want to enter the country legally? Okay. Allow the non-convicted felons to enter legally so that you at least know that all of the people who don't want, who are trying to enter illegally are more likely to be convicted felons. But we don't do that. We don't have that. That's the point. Convicted for what? That's another issue, which we're not going to get into now. A convicted felon is not a bad person automatically. A convicted felon could have been a rehabilitated person. The toilets are actually for the construction workers working on the wall. You can see them in the video in the background. Even if they were for the undocumented migrants, like it makes sense. Do you get it? Do you understand, though? So fucking stupid. He's uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security. His yep. sole responsibility is the safety and security of this country, and he's failing miserably. So here's all the fencing okay. that's just been sitting here, all this fencing that was bought by taxpayer money just sitting there collecting dust. You're down here now. Yep. <laughs> I figured I was showing him all the areas where they're cutting the fence and stuff like that. So They're cutting this with what, a blowtorch? Uh, they'll, they'll use uh, a combination of a uh, wheel because uh -huh. they use the battery-operated angle, angle grinder. Angle grinder. Okay. And then they'll cut the metal, and then they have to chisel out the concrete because each one of those posts has concrete in them. 
Yes, you're safe, brother. You too. <laughs> okay, so someone might hear you got the fence, but they can cut a hole in it. So why why have the fence? Again, it's a a, a deterrent. Okay. B, the amount of time it takes them to be able to cut this, yeah, gives the border patrol the ability to come down here and intercept. So when you see parts of the fence that have that patch on it. Okay, right there. That's where they have cut right above that piece, and that's allowed them the ability to swing that fence post. Okay. So they can get through. And you see there's a walkway all along the side of this fence. I've actually intercepted them cutting the fence myself, and I got the one finger Tap. wave because it pissed them off. Can you but do anything being sheriff or? The only border, thing I can do is if they. Border Patrol has to do it. Arizona had 1070 law, and that allowed us to charge an individual for smuggling. Yeah, I forgot. I thought this guy was CBP at first because the CBP wears the same colors. But it's infinitely funnier that he's talking to a fucking sheriff about this, by the way. Like, this entire video makes it, it becomes even more hilarious because he's just a sheriff. Like, he's got nothing going on. Mm -hmm. But the Obama administration sued the state of Arizona, took him to court. Supreme Court said, yes, you're right. Federal responsibility is immigration. Smuggling is part of that. So Arizona, you cannot charge a person for smuggling. So if we detain anybody for just an immigration violation, mm -hmm. technically we can get charged by the Department of Justice for kidnapping. As you should. Figure that one out. Even if our officers respond to a domestic violence call and we find a house full of individuals that are in there, there's nothing that we can charge that person with. What? Knowingly that they are smuggling. Now we can yeah. try to get over. Yeah. What do you mean? Bro, he just said, if I suspect someone is being detained for a domestic violence call and I suspect them of being like a smuggler because I saw a bunch of Mexican people living with him, I can't detain, I can't hit him with a additional charges. That is crazy. Wait, I don't know why you just said it like that. Yeah, no shit. Arrest him for domestic violence, dumbass. What the fuck are you talking about? You can't just like tack on additional charges willy nilly on your mind. What the fuck? He literally said, I can't just be like extra racist to the Mexican guy that I'm detaining. To hold a person, a house full of individuals that are in there, there's nothing that we can charge that person with knowingly that they are smuggling. Yeah, there is. He's chat. He's saying, if I go on a domestic violence call, he's not saying I can't arrest the guy for domestic violence. He can. Don't be fucking stupid. Of course, it is within his legal purview and responsibility to do so. He's saying, I can't, even if I know he's fucking smuggling people, which he doesn't have any proof for in this hypothetical scenario that he br uh, brought up, he can't hit him with a, with a smuggling charge because he's just a sheriff. Now, we can try. Which, of course, Border Patrol does. Border Patrol does sweeps, Okay. They'll go into a fucking uh, workplace and just arrest everyone. He can't do that. Which, by the way, he shouldn't be able to. I don't even think the Border Patrol should be able to do that. It's fucking nuts. Do you not understand how fucked up that is? He's literally saying, I don't have Gestapo power over every Mexican I see. Try to get a hold of Border Patrol if they have people to respond. But that's in Yuma. All the rest of the places throughout the country... They don't have access to more. Yes, control, they right? do. Yes, they do. Shut the fuck up, you inbred fuck. You don't know. Yes, they fucking do. It's actually a massive fucking problem. He said, hey, we're in Yuma. We got fascists on dial, on speed dial. to do extra fascism. Shut the fuck up. God damn it, dude. Fuck this guy. Just I to come take the case. What's the number one nationality you're seeing these days? Or right the top now, three? I think the top ones is Ecuador, and then Colombia. What's with OTM? Have you heard of that other than Mexican? Yeah, they've used that for years other than Mexican. That's, that's what all these are. I mean, you don't see a whole lot of individuals from Mexico proper trying to come across because they'll get returned immediately because there's, there's that agreement with the country. So 
when you look at people talking about Title 42, that's where they're able to send individuals back to those countries. 95% of what comes across into Yuma is Title 8. These are individuals that are coming from countries where that government won't take them back. Are the cartels operating much on this side of the border? In oh, Yuma, are you dealing with them? They're on both sides. It's safer for them to live over here. Think about it. So you do have members of the cartel that live in the U.S. all along the border. You have Sicarios that live on the U.S. side. Sicarios. Hitmen. Okay. Those are what the cartels use to take out their... Okay, do your fucking job. Do your job. Do your job. Do your job. Do your job. You're the sheriff. Do your job. Why the fuck are you complaining about, like, going on a domestic uh, domestic violence call Why? Why are you complaining about going on a fucking domestic violence call and not being able to arrest every single Mexican you see at the house because you suspect that this family is actually smuggling one another? Yeah, if you got fucking criminals, if you have actual fucking rugged criminals and cartel members living, do some detective work, dog. Inform the fucking, inform ICE on that shit. The fuck do you mean? He's like, yeah, we call up ICE when we see more than eight Mexicans living in one house. How about you fucking call ICE when you find a Sicario? He's like, <laughs> yeah, he. <laughs> uh, the other day I went to a quinceanera. You wouldn't believe how much smuggling was happening. You don't understand. They call it quinceaneras, brother. I call it immigrant detention center. Uh, <laughs> Appointees. Trey Leche smuggling. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's smuggling. He's smuggling fucking Trey Leche's donuts, okay? They're opponents, let's say. So you, you have major narcotics groups all through the U.S. MS-13 is, is one that everybody's familiar with hearing with. Well, that's why they're integrated in all these communities with the cartels. Not only the narcotic side, but the human side as well. Because if you can't afford to pay the cartel, then you are going to pay them in another way. Human trafficking. So they're going to pay. Hmm. It seems like there's a really good way to ensure that this doesn't happen. You know? Like a really good way. Because, like, it doesn't matter... People are going to want to come to America regardless. I wonder if they just served the top of the hour ad break and then told you that at the top of the hour, there is a three minute ad break and you can avoid those ads by subscribing for $5 or for free. Would it actually change people's perceptions? You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's the three minute ad break now. Bro. What is this, bro? 9.12 out of 10? That's... Why, why do you have to be so different, okay? What is this? 9.12. He's like, I'm sorry. I, I, actually, I actually operate on a way different scale. He takes it so seriously. Anyway... All jokes aside, what I was actually going to say is, <clears throat> yeah, if only there was a way to, like, completely eviscerate the human trafficking component of the cartel business. Hmm, let's think. How could we do such a thing? How could we make it so that, like, uh, there was no need for the cartel? Oh, yeah, that's right. Legalize these border crossings. There you go. Okay, you ended it. You ended the cartel's one arm of the cartel operation immediately. You want to end another arm of the cartel operation? Decriminalize drugs. You want to end another arm of the cartel operation? Make it impossible to fucking give them a steady flow of weapons. Holy fuck, all of a sudden you eradicated major chunks of the cartel. All without ever stepping foot inside of Mexico like what Lindsey Graham was suggesting we do. We take the American military and we bomb the shit out of like uh, 
you know, Mexican villages or whatever. You don't have to do any of those things, and you can still completely eviscerate the cartel. You hit the profit centers. Anyway, uh, yeah, we'll talk about this in a second. According to what the cartel wants. So if you got a kid, they may use that kid to smuggle in other people, send them back to that country, bring in somebody else, portray a family unit. You may end up Portray with, a family unit, because if you come in as a family unit, you have quicker access to get into the US. So we're coming up on the Kokopa tribal land. And in Arizona, Tribal land is sovereign land. And the Kukupa is a, a river, the river people. So they need access to the river because that's part of their... So on their tribal land, there's no fence? There's no fence. There are bollards, or we call them uh, Normandy barriers. And that's used to uh, keep the individuals that were smuggling narcotics okay. from coming across in vehicles and UTVs. But again, here's the Port of Johns that we had to do. Border Patrol had to put up a cover for shade. So this is for migrants coming in? Yep. So to give you an idea of the monstrosity that we were dealing with here, this was all covered in trash. Some NGOs have come in and cleaned this up. But what I would find down here is all these identification cards and passports. Mm -hmm. I picked all these up myself. Just in the dirt out here? Just on the ground. And we might find some again today. But see, these are individuals that have fled countries of violence, mm -hmm. then gone to another country, been allowed to stay there. That's what a lot of these green ones are. They've been allowed to reside in those countries and work and live. But that's not what their original intent was. Their original intent was to get through that country to get to the United States. So they discard their passports, their ID cards, and they portray themselves as somebody different from their original country of violence. So it's a game. So Bro, that's your takeaway? That's insane. My man just described like an unimaginable amount of effort and pain that these people have went through that is like impressive to survive. Like he said, he's talking about survival, okay? Recognizing that these are countries of violence. I don't know how he, uh, what that means, but like, and he just talked about it like it's a fucking, like they're having fun with it, dude. <laughs> Someone said, this guy has the most racist facial hair. <laughs> he does. It's like, obviously the most racist facial hair is the Hitler mustache, but like, this is a close second. So we share all this with HSI. So every one of these have been shared with our, our federal government. But this is just a, a small snapshot of what I've picked up down here as far so as passports. If you're from Venezuela, right, let, yeah. me, let me try to walk through this, right? You, you come over, you come up through Mexico, mm -hmm. right? You want to discard your passport before you come over? Yeah, because everything's given to you here. What? Especially if you're Venezuelan. Bro, how does this guy live in a fucking border town? And is the sheriff of Yuma County and just completely oblivious to like literally asylum protections for uh, countries that America considers to be like foreign adversaries like Venezuela. That's why I was like genuinely surprised when Ron DeSantis took Venezuelans uh, who are legally in the country, by the way, like they legally can come in. Okay. To the United States of America. For those of you who don't know, Venezuelans are treated as, like, kind of not dissimilar to Cubans back in the day. They are refugees of communism. America no longer allows you to uh, seek asylum if you're fleeing sexual violence, but America allows you to seek asylum when you are fleeing communism. Straight up. 
So, hiking, immigration, paralegal here. Let's not forget that all the that the cartels are created, managed, and protected by the CIA as a way to direct black funds into CIA, fake CIA banks to fund covert operations off the books and outside the purview of Appropriations Committee. Also, those docs that he found were thrown on the ground by Border Patrol. It happens often, sadly. No way are people discarding their important documents. Yeah, I don't think they, are, they would do that either. That's why he said, oh, they give you everything. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? No, they don't. You're, you're done. You're a slave after that point. <laughs> it's true. Actually, I'm the guy that hands them new passwords right when they cross the border. I also give them 10 grand in white taxpayer money. Yeah. I call it reparations. That's right. I take white taxpayer dollars and give it directly to the Venezuelans. I say, hey, you recognize communism, which you are, of course, not fleeing communism, but are still a very much active radical communist. I want you to undermine America. And the Watt establishment in the United States of America with your anti-Watt rage. Here's $10,000 of this Yuma County Sheriff's own money. Okay, what happens if you, come, if you come over with your passport? They're going to say... Well, for some now, they're allowed to stay. Some are allowed to stay. Yeah. Okay. But those individuals have already reestablished residency somewhere else. So maybe it's a Venezuelan that lived in Mexico for five years... Or a year. Or a year, okay. And their ultimate goal was to get here. Right. I, I, I read a lot of the Haitians that came in, say, this last summer, or whenever that was in the last year. Yeah. A lot of them had lived in Chile or other places, not even Haiti. Oh, yeah. And they recently came up. But they haven't even been in Haiti for a long time. No. Okay, so, so here's where it ends. So here's where... Yeah, no, that's why, like, uh, uh, first... What is it? First Harbor... Laws are fucking idiotic. Okay? Yeah. Bro, of course the Haitian migrant living in Chile is going to come to America. Motherfucker, people living in Chile are also trying to come to America that are Chilean uh, na nationals. The fuck do you mean? It's not like... Uh, <laughs> you know, they're, they're trying to come too. They're like, yay. These Haitians, they went to Guatemala, brother, and then they want to come here. I'm like, yeah, next to the Guatemalan nationals that are also trying to come here. Yeah. The fuck? Speaking of Haiti, it's interesting. As soon as unrest develops in Haiti in a way that undermines U.S. public government, suddenly firearms are flooding in Haiti in a way that will almost ensure destabilization that could be weaponized to justify U.S. Canada-led international invention. Wait, what? Listen, I don't want to say too much about this guy, but, like, sometimes he gets things gigantically wrong. I mean, I don't know enough about what's going on in Haiti to have a, a, a coherent take on this. I'm sorry. It was one of those, yeah, Hammersickle Twitter accounts. It's like... Anyway, let's continue with this. The fencing ends, and this is the tribal land, as you can see. So you, you have the Kukupa tribal land, which is sacred, sovereign land. You get some border challenge coins. Look, right here. See what I was telling you about? They tossed their money. So this is all money. They know when they get here, they're going to be able to... Here's a euro. Yeah. So Look at that. Go ahead and pick them up. We have a euro. Don't throw it back down. Keep it. What is that? I'll put it in my uh, peso. You're a Dude, he's such... Okay, that was kind of cute in a weird way. I know he's like a fascist piece of shit. But like, he's like, don't, don't throw it back down. Keep it. I'll put it in my package. I'm going to run that again. In a weird way, you see the humanity of this piglet for a second. Where he's like, this is like cute for him. This is like fun for him. Look. Throw it back down. Euro. Look. Yeah, so... Look at that. Go ahead and pick him up. We have a euro. Don't throw it back down. Keep it. What is that? I'll put it in my uh, package. I'll 
<sighs> he's like he's got like a little package that he like looks at. Like that's his like p- prize possessions. You're a coin collector now, Sheriff. Well, I use it for display, display purposes. So what what coins have you seen? Like what are the most far out there coins? I think the juxtaposition is like very strange, but when you think about it, he's like he's talking about this like he's an old man with a hobby, but his hobby is the possessions of like some of the most undermined, most marginalized people who he does not even see as human beings, nor does he even see as animals because he would have more empathy towards an animal. It's very odd. Well, I'm waiting to find something from Russia. <laughs> We're looking so, for Russian rubles out here but on the see, border. Anybody I bring down here, well, you missed a bunch. But you see right here, they tear up their IDs. They're still doing it. Okay. They'll tear up their identification card because they don't want to get caught. Should there's, I? There's some more right there. See, look, you're missing on a lot of money. More euros? <laughs> this is crazy. When I bring what, a, people, what a wild, I mean, you're used to it, but what a wild part of the world. We're right here, yeah. Yuma County, then the natives control this land. Right. We have euros in the dirt. Yeah. And, and Russian. Just, I could see that being done by Border Patrol. I mean, maybe they're doing it themselves, but I could also see, <clears throat> I mean, we've seen so many fucking videos of Border Patrol literally dumping water and shit that activists leave behind. Like, if you want to know how fucking gruesome this stuff is, remember that it's like, People have gone to jail. People have been convicted. People have been charged because they want to help undocumented migrants by like leaving out water for them in certain parts of the border where conditions are so unmanageable. And there are so many videos of Border Patrol agents just like dumping the water out as a part of their modus operandi. Like they just fucking straight up. L chat, L streamer, W Mexicans. What? <laughs> Listen, we're pro we we are pro flexigan in this chat. This is a pro flexigan community. Pins and 140 nationalities getting through here some way shape or form. Oh yeah. Here here's some more right here, look. See? More IDs tore apart. Okay, so they now just if you click, put this they together. The IDs. See? If you put this together, It'll have all the information you need. So why do they do it right on the border? Why don't they just do it like way in there? Well, yeah, that's a great question. Oh, that, that's a great question. That He asked an actual logical question. Why are they doing it right here then? Like, this makes no sense. Yeah. It literally makes it way... It makes me feel like they're doing it uh, they're not the ones doing it. It's Border Patrol doing it. Toothbrushes. Yeah. So it's not a, it's not an eco-friendly bunch, but that's the last thing on their minds, obviously, trying to get into yeah, another country. Care. I mean, you look at some of the most eco-friendly pictures bunch? where all of this is just covered in trash, this whole area. But luckily, an NGO came along and cleaned it up because they knew senators were coming. Yo, this fucking piece of shit is driving a fucking Ford Raptor and freaking out about, like, the Border Patrol agents dumping all of these guys' possessions. Okay? Like, luckily, an NGO came up and cleaned the streets up a little bit because a senator was coming. It's like, bro, what are you What are you doing? What are you doing? Put a fucking trash can there, and they'll dump it in the trash can. How about that? even though I do firmly believe that half of that trash is not even thrown by the fucking migrants. The idea that, like, migrants are so dirty, like, they're extra dirty, they're dirty, they're littering, like, like bro, they're escaping gruesome violence, dude. And because the senators are coming, you got to sanitize before they get here to make it look like there's not really a big issue. Because you come here now and you're like, yeah, there's no issue. There's no one trying to get over. Yeah. But you're saying it pulses. Like, mm-hmm. you have the tent set up there. You had a big rush here. Mm-hmm. Now it's somewhere else. Now it's moved. 
We had the guy that we ran into down there, obviously. Yeah. This guy's got a full ID here. Oh, look, there's all kinds of them right here. This guy's from China. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna be devil's advocate for one second, ready? ready? Go right ahead. Just go along with me here. Right. We're a country of immigrants. Right. We all came from somewhere. Right. And uh, we need- That's not the devil's advocate, dude. You're being the, the angel's advocate. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think he's doing devil's advocate there. He's doing angel's advocate, calling it devil's advocate. Maybe it's a devil for him, but- I love that, like, describing to a fucking Yuma sheriff- you know, principles like empathy and, and uh, you know, feeling like the people that uh, the people that he's like uh, talking about are actually human beings is like uh, such a incredible concept. It, it's so it's so unimaginable that he has to he has to basically preface it with like, hey, man, uh, you know, not to be compassionate here, but let me do some devil's advocacy need immigration we have, correct you know we need a workforce okay. we need we need brains we need talent we need work mm -hmm. um but like you said before there's a threshold like how much can you take <laughs> and everyone has a threshold as yeah. in like they're living in their house right and if all of a sudden they had 300 people show up on their front lawn they would have reached their threshold right so what is that threshold maybe that's yeah. the big question which nobody can really agree on right well you have these electeds and all you hear is we need to fix our immigration. We need to fix our immigration laws, right? Why don't we have a change in the immigration laws? Because they can't get together on it. So what do they do? They oh, it's bipartisan gridlock. That's it. Oh, shit, man. I had no idea. Guys, 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 guys. It was that. That's the reason. Not because, like, uh, you know, uh, the American government, Congress in general, is working at the behest of mega corporations, and of course, like. Uh, the, the entire purpose then becomes, uh, the entire purpose then becomes to just, you know, uh, create a steady flow of, of, uh, of migrant laborers that you can exploit and even use as a cudgel against like the documented labor force in the country. That can't be the reason. It's just, uh, you know, oh, fuck man, they want to do something about it. They just can't. They create a crisis to take your mind off of the fact that they can't do their job. What's the crisis? Immigration. COVID. You name it. Here's another euro. Oh, cool. Did you ever see as many euros down here? Euro coin? I love when COVID is only brought up when, when we talk about the dirty migrants, too. Fuck, I got to pee. I'll be back. Things? Oh, I've Or got... is that a new thing? No, no, I got... Oh, look, there's a whole ID. Nigeria? Where's that one? Peru. Peru. Oh, look, more. <laughs> Jesus. See, they don't. <laughs> so do they find, they find it easier over here, obviously. Well, yeah, you can walk right across here. Look, here's some more. It's blowing right at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's snowing currency. You know how much- Too bad this isn't worth anything. Well, over there it is. So the Cocoa Pop fence is just to show that's where the border, obviously that doesn't stop anything. Well, that was actually put into place to deter the tractor thefts and the stolen vehicles that were being stolen here, taken into Mexico. The tractors were obviously sold to other farmers down deep in Mexico, but the cars were turned into smuggling vehicles, and then they would drive back across with large loads of narcotics. So that's why all that was put into place. It was like a vehicle barrier but it didn't deter the, the tribe's ability to get to the river. Now that we're down here towards Gadsden and San Luis, welcome to Jurassic Park. So please keep your hands and your limbs inside the vehicle at all times. Wait, what? Because I don't want you to... You have a garage door opener for the, for the fence? For is the fence. what's going on here? For the gate, yeah. This is still the U.S., right? Yeah, this is all U.S. Okay. Welcome to Mexico. <laughs> like, I'm going to be <laughs> carrying guns into Mexico. They'd love that right now. <laughs> so what do we have here? Burnt wire? What's the point of that? Well, they were keeping... Interesting to think about that, like, you can very easily... You have a clicker to get into Mexico, but, you know, people in Mexico can't come into your country. Let's not think about that for too long. Warm, so they burned anything that they could find. 
isn't setting a fire here just like a basic sign that you're here and the... well they got a camera right there so they know but they're just waiting for border patrol to have oh that wasn't mexico he was still in the united states i thought he wait i thought he said he is in mexico now he was joking they aren't in mexico he said it was jurassic park oh first to come pick him up what was that right there yeah <laughs> Here we got a cue. I got you, baby. You gotta work on your uh, powers of observation. I know, but this is the this is the well, hard detail. Uh, you're supposed to oh, give you're, it oh, to oh, Sorry, Sorry, I forgot. I'm your you know, Trevette. Yeah, you're Walker, Texas Ranger. We need to stop the narcos to solve this. Put drug dealers in death sentence. Bro, you just looked at this situation and went, we need to put drug dealers in death sentence. Just an animal, dude. I mean, you literally are reacting like a fucking animal. MAGA, MAGA people are straight up just responding basically to to things in an identical fashion that you would like a like an animal. <laughs> How does it make you feel though, seeing this every day? Do you become numb, or does it dishearten you because you, well, you love it's... your country, or what is like? What does that feel like for you? I feel bad for the rest of the country because. We're all going to have to deal with this. Your your community is going to pay the price for what this administration is doing. I'm not enforcing the rule of law. The bottom line is, to enter this country legally, you have to go to a port of entry. Claim asylum at a port of entry. That is the law. I get the fact that a lot of the politicians don't like the immigration law. Well, fix it and change it. But until then, you need to enforce the rule of law. It worked. We've seen it through the prior administration when we were only getting 25 to 40 apprehensions a day in, in Yuma, Yuma, Yuma okay. County proper versus over a thousand. It's the basic Marxist position to be heavily against drug dealers, though. What? Okay, okay, I got to point to something here really quickly while you're spamming. I don't give a fuck what your interpretation is of what the basic Marxist position is. I, I don't have a dogmatic understanding of of, you know, Marxism in general, okay? Stop trying to bait me into dumb shit. I, uh, why? I thought the U.S. was wholesome as heck. Don't you see it in Ukraine? Wholesome? Oh, God, this is one of those fucking weirdos. Ziz on it all over his fucking profile. Jesus Christ. So weird, dude. I love when people quote Marx like the Bible. Even then, it's like they're they're not even quoting anything. They're just like misquoting too. That's the other thing. Yeah, it's definitely fucking one of those like weirdos. Like I'm a mega communist, brother. Yo, what's wrong with Ziz? I love Ziz, but but basically, what this guy is fucking saying. Oh, you banned him. I unbanned him. Let, let, let's hear what else he has to say. He's got some good ideas. He's really into feet. The foot lover. Where the fuck was I? Oh, here it is. Thousand a day now. This administration, because of their politics and personal and political ideologies, stopped all that because they hate one guy who actually supported law enforcement. And the people of this country need to understand there it is. that this is coming into their backyard. This person's going to be in their backyard under a different name, and you don't know what kind of criminal history this guy's got. What? But I've you don't either. Doctors, I've run into lawyers from different countries down here. I've run into school teachers. Wait, he gets the problem. He, like, literally just said what I said, which is, yeah, if you legalize immigration, then... Yeah, the people who are going to try to sneak in are most likely going to be people who might be criminals, which you can apprehend and then figure out uh, otherwise, okay? Like, he just said it. Oh, my God, he admitted. But he's just so permanent. He's so perma-stuck being like, well, they're brown. So, uh, you know, they're, they're fucking probably drug dealers and rapists and stuff that, like, he can't even, can't even comprehend a world where, like, again... 
He understands that these are people fleeing violence in many instances. But he is hyper-focusing on, well, they're littering down here. They're straight up with you on why they're coming here. But then you have the others that don't want to be identified and why. Is this a child molester? Is this a murderer? <laughs> what crimes has he done in that country that he fled? Yeah, <laughs> brother. Doctor or not, you think motherfuckers that cross the fucking border? <laughs> you think motherfuckers that cross the border are going to get like, you know, a, a kind and warm welcome by hogs like you? You think they're all fucking child molesters? Ironic, though. Wow, a lot of accusations th thrown at that guy, and he ain't even here. <laughs> yeah, he's just... <laughs> he's like, yeah, this guy's a child molester, probably. Chomo, I think. That's a question that anybody in public safety would want to know. But yet, because of the policies of this administration, we're probably never going to know until it's too late because somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah, he's like, dude, dude, his mentality is so funny. He's like, you know... Child molesters are coming over to the border so they can do, so they can level up and, and predate on American children, okay? They want the white children to predate on. That's why they're coming into America, brother. I know it, okay? Me and my priests sometimes talk about that kind of thing, you know? We talk about how hard it is to stop ourselves, and sometimes we do engage in it ourselves. You know what I'm saying, brother? <laughs> They want child predation on New Game Plus difficulty. He keeps saying this administration, but like what has actually changed from even the days of Obama? That's the beautiful part is that he also ironically betrayed the idea that like Trump was so much better with immigrants or whatever by being like Trump, by kind of admitting that Trump didn't fucking actually close the border. Like he said he was going to build the wall. And that, as a matter of fact, Biden is currently building the wall. Which, of course, hadn't stopped since the Obama administration either. Obama was hard on immigration. Harder than Trump. Obama deported more people than Trump did. In his first four years, Obama deported more people than Trump did. And I am willing to bet that Joseph Robinette Biden will also deport more people than Donald Trump. In his four years. Biden is currently still using Title 42. A Trump era provision. To unjustifiably deny asylum seekers their legal and moral right. Hey, Biden doesn't actively encourage child detainment. He just low-key supports it. Yeah, sorry. I forgot. Uh, it's no longer uh, children in cages. It's now children in immigration uh, overflow facilities. Which is very different. That's what's great about being sheriffs in rural areas. When you've worked in that community for so long, they know you. <laughs> it's one thing that I tell every officer that goes through an academy. Mm -hmm. Never, ever in your career compromise your integrity or your ethics, because once you compromise that, you can never get that back. So You've been here for how long in law enforcement? Well, I started as a reserve when I was in the Marine Corps back in 1985. For all you mathematicians out there, how many years was that? Uh, we're coming up on almost 40. Of course, he's a fucking crayon eater, dude. Of course. So 38? In two years, 30, yeah. yeah. We're they are not the sending their best to the fucking to sheriff's department in Yuma County. That's going to help somebody else. So I enjoy the fact that I can go out and do things that most careers don't allow you to do. As a DACA recipient, one difference I will note is that Trump gives the green light to agencies under him to deport long-time undocumented residents. Dems encourage deferred action. This is true. And that marginal difference usually does lead to long-term results. Like, uh, I mean, not long-term, sorry. Those marginal differences lead to very large differences. That is true for the people on the ground. 
I agree. Ultimately, DACA was an Obama-era provision, which was still a compromise position, and it's still literally it has a 90% approval rating. So much so that when Trump said he was going to do it, he still was like kind of politically unable to do it. Except to all the DACA recipients uh, in the chat, I do have to point to one thing. David Dobrik is a DACA recipient. So, not all good, folks. <laughs> I'm also dagger and holy shit, dude, why must you hurt me this way? Not all good. They're not sending their best from Slovenia. And it's bar and it bars you from becoming a legal citizen without some serious hoops to jump through. But that's true for any immigrant that isn't rich. Whoa! This guy said those crayon eaters are the reason you have the freedom to do what you do. By the way, really? That's crazy. Did this guy fight in like World War II or something? But even then, it was like the USSR taking on the the fucking majority of the of the burden shouldering the majority of the burden so explain to me <coughs> explain to me without talking about world war ii when the last time Mar the marine corps protected my freedoms freedoms like what explain to me the last time the marine corps protected my freedoms Wait, what are they fucking going to who else is protecting your mansion yeah exactly so what, what did they do? Did the Marine Corps, I'm sorry, did the Marine Corps uh, defend my freedoms? Because uh, let's say the First Amendment, right? Like what? Do you think like uh, some fucking goat herder in a mountain of Afghanistan, in an Afghan mountain was like, uh, you know, a genuine threat, constitute a genuine threat to my fucking freedoms? My, were they coming over to take my fucking uh, First Amendment rights? Is that what you think was going on? They protected you from that one hobby as weather balloon. Yeah, that wasn't even the Marine Corps. Okay, see, so these are field workers? No, these are illegals. Seriously? Yes. Can we cruise by them? Yeah, we're going to. So the cartels are Those collecting are their money down here under this bridge. Jeff182, so thank you for the Mexico. five gifted subs. But there's nothing between us and there, other than this fails. Wow. So they're they're super casual and look like yeah. they're walking off to school or the they park got or men, something. men, women, children. In yeah, it almost feels like they're human beings, dude, which are just doing human being shit. Like being human beings, you know what I mean? I know, it just like seems like an unimaginable concept, but... Defense. So you wave to them. Why not? So you have a decent relationship with these people coming in. Well, I'm not in. here to... Um, doesn't matter where they're from. Yeah. We still have a duty and responsibility as far as public safety goes. Some of these people have been victimized. The children have been taken to... God, I fucking love... It. This is why I love America. This is why I love America. Don't say cap. Don't say liar. No. Dude. Dude. He's not... Dude, he's not... That is... Okay. Every American down to the last hog contains multitudes, okay? Like every American is just a a a mixture of oftentimes conflicting ideas, okay? You need to you a sea of contradiction. You need to understand that. Like in his mind, he's like, yeah, these are just like guys that are fleeing violence and shit. He even personally said, you know, I, I wish we could just like do uh, better immigration. Okay. Hogs are people too. Chat forgets they are products of their environment. He probably just got all his beliefs from other hogs around him. Still can't believe he pulled out the blicky on stream. Yeah, in honor of John Morant. To our child facilities because they were violated along their trek to get here. You don't know what's happened to them or where they're from. You're welcome to talk to them. Okay, if you yeah. want to. 
Find out where they're from and where they're going. Yeah, yeah. Hola. Uh, de donde eres? Ecuador. Ecuador? Colombia. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Ecuador. Colombia. Colombia. Where are you going in the U.S.? California, New York. California? <coughs> huh? New York. But don't do this anymore. No more. No more. No more. Oh, come on. Oh, this is so fucking. Oh, Jesus Christ, bro. That's fucked up. Bro, he pulled out of the fucking cop car, too. Like. Oof. Instead of seeing us. Por favor. Por favor. Gracias. What is worth it? Another one. <laughs> Let me zoom in right under the bridge on that car. Okay. So that's where they'll meet up with the cartels, and then they'll point them in the direction. So the cartels are get over. right there. Yeah. Do they ever fire over the border? Oh, yeah. We actually had some uh, individuals, Border Patrol, doing special detail because we are having a bunch of kidnappings going on out here because the criminal element over there in Mexico knows that these folks have money. So as the cartels, we got them across, another criminal group would come in and kidnap them to take all their money and their jewelry. So Border Patrol was doing special details down here and got an actual shootout with the bad guys. One died in the U.S. soil, so he ended up in our mortuary. But that, that happens down here quite a bit along this area because it's so lucrative. I mean, it's, it's, it's a cash crop, per se. Every, every one of these people in their eyes is, what, $6,000, mm -hmm. yeah. $7,000, so it's, $8,000. It's quick money. The cartels don't want to mess with you, correct? Like no. they wouldn't fire a bullet over? Oh, they probably would. <laughs> Should we get in the car? <laughs> I mean, it's something we live with every day. Trust me. If they start shooting at me, I'm shooting back. Because that's still the U.S. Hell yeah, brother. You fucking shoot back right at him. You know? He's got them hogs. He'll take them hogs down one by one. U.S. And they know that local law enforcement doesn't tolerate it. If you get caught over here, you're going to jail, period. They already know that here, and they know that over there. The feds might let them get away with it, but local law enforcement will not. So, yeah. I'll tell these people there's some water over here. Amigos, agua. Okay, you got it. This place will be full of people. They usually have them come over in large groups, and here's why they do that. They will inundate Border Patrol with large groups of individuals <laughs> that are give-ups. So it ties up Border Patrol's resources from the field and takes them away from out east so they can get their narcotics and the other human smuggling for those that don't want to get caught across the border. So yeah, the clothes, you know, like new white clothes, the backpack is looks pretty new, not dirty. They didn't do a hard journey. No. And so how it works is if you get over, right, you're going to call back home and you're going to say to your friends or relatives going to be saying, hey, here's how you do it. It's pretty easy right now. Yep. It just encourages more. Yeah. They're coming here to better their life. I get that, but they need to do it the legal way. I'm also a public safety servant. Anybody in my county, we respond to help. We've handled over 780 911 calls from immigrants that were left abandoned out in our remote desert needing help. 780 last year or what? Yeah, if we end up with somebody that has a medical condition down here, that takes away that EMS resource from that community to handle this down here. Federal government isn't reimbursing them. Our deputies working on overtime, much like the rest of local law enforcement, try to fill the gap for Border Patrol because they're tied up with this. We've taken over 70 death investigations out in the remote desert because people died out there because they were abandoned by the cartels. You're right here in San Luis, Arizona. That's San Luis, Mexico, right across the fence. So what the cartels will do is they will have a large buildup of individuals that don't want to get caught. 
that will utilize those ladders to get up the fence and cross over. Border Patrol has to respond to try to catch them, but unfortunately, you're so close to the housing areas that they don't catch them all. So they do end up in these neighborhoods, and that's part of the impact on the, the local community. How do these neighborhoods feel? Well, they don't care for that. They don't want it in their backyard any more than you'd want somebody running into yours. But there are probably some stash They're houses not, out here, right? Oh, there are. I mean, right up here is the old Kentucky. fried chicken building where we had the most recent drug tunnel identified drug, drug tunnel drug tunnel. oh fuck i was muted oh god damn it um his position isn't even consistent he talks trash about the cartels and shooting the migrants but then he turns around and starts talking trash about the migrants yeah it's not i told you it's it's contradicting tunnel into the kentucky fried chicken yeah so we came up into the kitchen. The drug tunnel went under the fence. Under the canal. Kentucky Fried Chicken had sold the building to another guy. It was owned privately because a guy was going to turn it into another restaurant. OK, so it, it was in between ownership. It right. wasn't operating at that time. Right. So they built a tunnel under all this infrastructure. And they ended up tunneling up to the kitchen area, and it was a small opening because it was all hard narcotics. So we're talking fentanyl, heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine. So no one was crawling through it. it oh, was they just... were. They were crawling all the way up, but the hole in the floor was small. Do you think they'll make it to the Pizza Hut this year? <laughs> hard to say. <laughs> they're, they're quite ambitious. It could happen. You got to be one heck of an engineer to be able to plot depth and everything else to get all the way over there to here. That's millions of dollars. And you see that pinkish style building up there? Yeah. Right across the street was an old postal type business. Not US Postal, but a packaging company. That's where the other tunnel came across is right up there. So it went underneath all that. He shot this with an iPhone camera, by the way. That's kind of fucking crazy. Look. Is that an iPhone camera or is that an actual camera camera? Am I crazy? That's a GoPro. Packaging company. That's where the other tunnel came across is right up there. So it went underneath all that up there. So what the percentage road. of tunnels do you think are not getting discovered that are currently well, there, in operation? I'm sure there's quite a few. Plenty of them. Right? Yeah. Right now, a big thing for us down here dealing with is drones. What the fuck is this watch, bro? It's got like turquoise rocks on it. Like, what the hell? There was a chatter who kept saying, look at his watch, look at his watch. And I didn't even notice it until just now where he's got some... Cr That's like the Ben 10 special. We got the Jade on the Roly. Wait, is that a Rolex? He's got a bust down AP. <laughs> Audemars with the fucking jade. You ain't got it like that. You got a drone that can carry a few pounds. Fentanyl doesn't weigh much, right? So you can get a big old package of fentanyl, have a drone come across. I'm not even kidding. I have that exact same like, like jade or whatever that rock is on a fucking bolo tie cross and their GPS controlled to a certain location and they'll drop it in a neighborhood and then they'll fly back. And just so you guys all know, sheriffs can speak openly, unlike most police officers, unlike Customs and Border Protection, they cannot speak on camera, correct? No. Like they're correct. not going to speak like you do. No, they have to uh, get authorization from like chiefs of police they have to get authorization from their council and their city managers and they're going to speak political speak double speak they're not really going to tell the true story because that could jeopardize yeah whereas this guy's telling the true story is their employment whereas sheriffs you're not accountable to anybody is that correct is well, that I'm the a, story i'm accountable to the people i work for and that's the community of yuma <laughs>
And one of the very cool things about the United States Dude, is American sheriffs along, are like, so insane, dog. Ride along. I go right. to the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. I can fill out paperwork and I can ride with the sheriff yeah. to understand what you guys do. And you can do that with your local law enforcement police department, too. Oh, yep, yep. You know? And I wouldn't encourage people to do that. I will tell you what. I've got over 100 volunteers that work for my agency. These are folks that are retired, that wanted something to do to give back to their communities. Bro, I love that. Retired, racist motherfuckers being like, I will work. Please deputize me, sir. <coughs> I'm bored. I'm bored. I will do it. What the fuck is a sheriff? They are not police. Yeah. Uh, sheriffs are something different. It's weird. That's old school America right there. They're like racist discord mods. Oh, so you mean just discord mods. Yeah. Sheriffs are elected officials that are above the law. Yeah. Please do a cop ride along stream. Dude, I've done a ride along before. It's fucking awful. We literally got 100 Steven Seagal's at the border. Well, remember, on the third season of Steven Seagal's Lawman, Steven Seagal actually does go to Arizona where, you know, he is able to do whatever the fuck he wants other than uh, avoiding the top of the hour ad break. Because no matter where you are, tranquilo, I've been avoiding the top of the hour ad break for 25 years. <coughs> <coughs> and if you no longer want to avoid the ads, if you no longer want to see those ads, just like I don't see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. Which you can do for $5 or for free. With a Twitch Prime, where mama at? Me want the panani. Me want to avoid the top of the hour ad break. Here's the three minute ad. Here's the three minute ad break now. North Shark Saboteur. Thank you for the five get the subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads. Where Abuela at? <laughs> so I have a number of volunteers that go through our academy that are armed that go out into this desert and do proactive patrols. They work with our search and rescue group. They grab a patrol car and they go out and they help us with neighborhood watch. It's all about being involved in your community. I'm gonna head east, okay. just so you know where we're going. No problem. <laughs> oh, do you? Okay. Slow so far? <laughs> <laughs> you think they background check those volunteers bro do they even background check cbp anymore what do you mean so here we go double fence yep I see two lights up right two All lights yeah i have a friend who's lebanese and his brother back in the day came back from iraq and they literally wouldn't let him be Customs and Border Patrol because he was Lebanese by, uh, no, not Austin, um, because despite the fact that he was in Iraq, his Lebanese background, he was worried that, uh, he was worried that like, like CBP was apparently worried that, uh, he might have ties to like Hezbollah and shit, which is incredible because now CBP literally hires everyone. But luckily, their racism actually helped him because he, he realized that that shit was totally fucked. Like he could have gone down a very, very, very different path. Not Hezbollah like the fighter. Hezbollah. My dad is 100% Shia Lebanese and he's been chewed up and spit out by the American system. The rest of these didn't get put up with the cameras because this administration stopped it. Now you have this, Highway 2, and this, no gate. So how are they getting over this one? They can get over with a ladder. ladder. That takes a little time, then they have to get that ladder over, and then they have to... Well, really, you just shimmy down that. 
you shimmy down, yeah, and then, and and then, then you'd then, have to get another ladder set up here, which would take time, or you can just go which through Which would allow Border Patrol to get here, but there is no gate. Okay. So, <laughs> how much does that make sense? It's the smoothest dirt road I've been on. It's because you're in a Raptor. My search and rescue is out here with these, because regular... Because you're in a Raptor, brother. <laughs> just get beat up. You get beat up. Because it's not all smooth, as you'll see. When I cut up through Smuggler's Pass, it gets a little rough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was for you. <laughs> this is a well-known area where individuals are brought up. Because you can cross right here. So here we have the trail going right up, and this is the border. When they get to the U.S. side here, this is pretty tough going, huh? There's nothing over here. It's two to three days walking directly north from here to get to any kind of civilization. And unfortunately, this is where we end up with people dying, is because they've been led to believe that it's only a little ways, you don't have to carry a lot, you don't have to have a lot of food, a lot of water. And you're going through a bombing range. This is where the military trains and they do live fire. There's a lot of unexploded ordnance and everything else that's out here. So the cartels have already got their money. When they get the, the people, the migrants to, to here, they've yeah. Last year, there was a sewage leak at the Rio Grande and we literally dumped gallon of raw sewage into Mexico for months. You could smell it driving by. That border fence looks like shit. Hey, chill. Yeah. TPP's dog shit friend dodged a bullet? Yeah, no, for sure. He's like, thank God their fucking racist ass behavior stopped me from joining when I needed a job. Who knows what he would have become. Done their job, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They got their money, so they don't care if they die in the U.S. side? No. It's a commodity. It's not a human life. So you're are saying... Are those people up here? Those are people. Where? Right here. Oh, jeez. How are you guys doing? Who's the hands from up. India? Mumbai, Dehradun, Gujarati. Chicago. That's where you're going? Chicago? What'd you do in India? Cong Congress leader. Hmm. Congress party's worker. Congress party worker, okay. You fly into Mexicali? No, Mexico. No, fly. Were they on a bus? Were you on a bus? Yeah, my yeah. With a group of nine from India. Yeah, that's fucking well, weird. I wonder if there was a smuggler who was supposed to pick them up out there. But it might be. That's, that's kind of strange. I wonder if it's because they extended Title 42, but India is not a Title 42 nation. No, it's not. They're Title 8, so I don't know why they came in through here. Usually they're down by the river. Maybe they paid the wrong people. Well. <laughs> What's up, brother? How are you doing, sir? Good, you? Not too bad. Yeah, they were just walking down the road. It was like... Yeah, they called now and got a whole bunch of times, so... Oh, they have? Yeah. How you doing, sir? Living the dream, right? <laughs> How you doing, sir? How you doing? Peter. Luis. Luis, nice to meet you. Usually they'll shoot like a group like this through here and then through one. Good time to remember, uh, remind everybody that 52% of ICE uh, and Customs and Border Patrol is Hispanic. So that idea that like, oh, if we have people that like, uh, you know, if we have more black people in the police force, like that'll fix the problem. Like, nope, no, it does not. Just remember that. 52% of Customs and Border Patrol is Hispanic. Spanish speakers are useful, so yeah. Yeah, that's not the reason. And that's not the only reason. 
They're hiring from Hispanic communities. They're hiring from Latino communities. Those are border communities half the time. I would love to know what percentage, what percentage of uh, the, the uh, Latino and Hispanic people that work for a CBP are second or third generation immigrants at, at some point where, you know, one of their parents on one side came into the country uh, through undocumented means. Job is a job, man. Dude, it's the fucking worst job. Get the fuck out of here. One ninety five, they'll try to give have another my, one across. Yeah, I got on. I got on all. So it's all about tying up you guys. Yes, sir. There you go. These folks were sitting here constantly down nine one one to get picked up. So cartels exploiting border patrol resources by having them do that out here to get their other product. My friend's brother, who's in CBP, is literally that. Their parents had them after immigrating to Texas from Mexico. He also voted for Trump. There you go. The, the cognitive dissonance is, like, insane in that mo at Through. that moment. Back where we were before. What pro people or drugs? Both. And what better way to do it than having a group 30 miles out in the middle of nowhere where you know that public safety is a priority, human life is a priority. They're going to Night's coming, they'd freeze out here. Yeah. So it's all part of the game. And I'm sure the cartel is over there somewhere watching. Because the highway is right there. He deported thousands of people. He then learned he was undocumented. Bro, are you fucking kidding me? Raul Rodriguez, a former U.S. Customs and Border Probation officer, has been fighting deportation after investigators discovered he wasn't a U.S. citizen. Bro, this is the one motherfucker that I think is valid to deport, okay? That's crazy. He was so shaken that he felt the blood rush into his feet. In a matter of seconds, a family secret had shattered the way he saw the world and his place in it. That day will never leave my mind. It's a terrible feeling, he says. It all began in April 2018 when federal investigators showed him a shocking document, a Mexican birth certificate with his name on it. A conversation with his father soon afterwards confirmed that Rodriguez is feared as soon as he saw the paperwork. The U.S. birth certificate he'd used for decades was fraudulent. Rodriguez wasn't a U.S. citizen. He was an undocumented immigrant. Rodriguez says he had no idea he'd been born in Mexico before his father's confession that day, but he knew immediately how serious the situation was. He'd spent nearly two decades working for the U.S. government at the border. By his estimates, he'd helped deport thousands of people while working for the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol, and before that, the Immigration and Naturalization Service. Like, this dude was in the INS. Like, he's got years and years, motherfucker. He's got years in this shit. Because remember, the Department of Homeland Security is like, you know, post 9-11. INS used to be, uh, uh, you know, what ICE was. ICE is a new thing. INS is pre-9-11. He didn't know his dad lied. Brother, what difference does it make? When a piece of paper that declares you were born on one side of a fucking made up border over the other, like this story should have been a come to Jesus moment for him. He's like, I'm American. What the fuck? I think American. I feel American. I grew up in America my entire life. That's the whole point. That's the whole fucking point. He's so fucking American. He's a hog. Yeah, he's got burger brain. He's got burger on the mind. So much burger on the mind that he's deporting other motherfuckers that look like him.
He lost so much so quickly after that. He lost his job at CBB, his friends in law enforcement, his sense of self. Oh, man, I'm so sad. He hasn't seen his father since that day in April 2018, and he never wants to speak with him again. Bro, he's like, he's like, I hate you, Dad, because you're undocumented. He's like, fuck you, Dad. Hassan Owes banned from Japan? What? Like, hey, dumbass. Wait, why is Austin Ox banned from Japan? What the fuck happened? Yeah, he was like... <laughs> Why are you saying that? Okay, whatever. Yeah, he was like, before you deport me. Before you deport me. Please. Let me deport my illegal immigrant alien father. Let me do one last good thing for this goddamn country that gave me everything. But now, nearly five years later, Rodriguez says he realizes he also gained something surprising after that moment when he learned he wasn't a U.S. citizen. It started off as a nightmare, but then it turned to be holy moly. This is what I was meant to do. It ended up somewhere he didn't expect. Okay, so what, what did it turn into? She served in the military Rodriguez had to before his career working for CBP and his predecessor. He served from 92 to 97 and was stationed in San Diego. Anyone who served in the military, Vegas says, knows what it's like to have uh, follow orders, put your personal feelings aside. Anita Rodriguez works for U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services and met her husband when they were both training to be inspectors for the NIS. Since then, she's going to dedicate. Okay, come on, come on. Did he get to stay in the country or not? Oh. Oh, wait. Oh, he's one of those. Uh, uh, I, I support the deported veterans. He switched teams and became the best damn coyote. Bro, you didn't, like, that didn't completely rewrite your fucking brain. That guy is not salvageable, okay? If he's still like, oh, yeah, by the way, the U.S. deports uh, military veterans all the time. We covered this back in the day. <laughs> but this motherfucker literally wasn't like, oh, yeah, we should, this immigration stuff is, like, completely fucked. He was like, no, just for military veterans. <laughs> they do? Yes. Yes, undocumented immigrants that serve this country, okay, oftentimes are lied to. Yeah, in her advocacy work, advocacy work helping deported veterans and veterans at risk of deportation as vice president of the Repatriate Our Patriots. Like, that's a real group. She'd first seen firsthand how cruel and confusing the U.S. immigration system could be, but this was unlike any story she'd heard before. I mean, that person is good. Diane Vega is a good person. Yeah, there was a Vice documentary, Used and Deported. Is that what it was called? And how, she wondered, could someone who'd worked for the CPP be facing deportation? Wasn't the only one surprised. Many responses were unsympathetic, Vega says, especially in border communities. They said, this is what you get for going against your own people. But Vega saw it in another way. She served in the military. Rodriguez had, too, before his career working for CPP and his predecessor. Yeah, it was his job. Some jobs are not the best, but we all have to follow orders. Well, I don't get it.
Yo, man, if you have so many issues with the U.S., why not live in the Nordic, Scandinavian, EU countries? First of all, it's not so easy. Secondly, I don't want to because I still love America. And lastly, just because America has so many fucking issues does not mean we shouldn't just like, we should just move away. Like, that's crazy. If you love something, you want to make sure you can change it for the better. I never understand this kind of take. It's like, just move, lol. Like, okay, well, it's still hard. Even for someone of my financial status, it's still like a very difficult thing to uproot yourself, which is why it's it's something that like I haven't really talked about because now we're now we are officially in my tenth or not tenth, in my tenth year of living in uh Los Angeles, but in my in my fourteenth year of living in the United States of America. I've been here for fourteen years. Okay, in the next four years, I will have officially lived half of my life in Turkey and half of my life in the States. And as time passes by, and it's been 10 years uh, since I moved to California, and as time passes by, I often forget how difficult it is, even for someone of my background, someone with my level of like knowledge over the English language, my command over the English language, how, you know, scary of a process it is to just like leave everything behind and move to a totally different fucking country. So it is unimaginable. Like you cannot comprehend how fucking difficult it is for these people who don't, who barely speak English to just leave everything behind in a much more dire uh, financial circumstances. Like it's, it's just crazy. Like I used to talk about this all the time, but it's like, what all you did was just be born on this soil and you take it for granted. These motherfuckers fought hard to be here. And American piece of shit hogs literally make it seem. Um, also, you were literally born. Exactly. Exactly. I'm a fucking anchor baby, dog. And the reason why I'm, a, I, I, I'm an anchor baby, because my parents were affluent enough. Do you understand? And even then, there's difficulties of just, like, coming to this country on your own. Like, I came to this country by myself. So, it's unimaginable how difficult it is to come in here with, and, and be in, like, immigration limbo. Also, you'd move to Japan, not a Nordic country. Let's be real. Yeah, if I were to move somewhere, it would probably... If I quit, I would pull a PewDiePie, 100%. No, not like pull a PewDiePie on the bridge. Pull a new PewDiePie. Move to Japan. Mr. Beast flies 1,000 pregnant women to America so they achieve anchor baby status. Okay, that's actually a goaded fucking video. Holy shit. God, I wish Mr. Beast would actually do like crazy shit like that. Instead of safe things like I gave 20,000 African children shoes. Like that shit would be fire, dude. Ow. I mean, people would fucking hate him, but he would dramatically change the lives of so many people. You should do it, bro. You think I have, brother? Chatter's like, hey, put all of your net worth, put literally every dollar you have to like chartering a private jet so you can avoid <laughs> immigration laws. Like, Mr. Beast has the power to be able to maybe do something like that. I, I don't think I... I can't. Mr. Beast does actually white replacement? Yeah, that'd be so sick. You would have to do... You would have to do it with, like... Uh, you know, you would literally have to do it uh, with, like, a private jet or something.
Oops. I'll help you out. Look. So you do it all. Pull this one out. Go like this, see? There you go. Pull, pull the other one out. Why do they take the laces out? Just so they... Well, you can use them for... Whatever, yeah. Yeah. So, so you got to make sure they don't have any knives, guns, narcotics. So they obviously India, have, so. They have money. They had the money to fly from India. They're all wearing new clothes. They flew up, mm -hmm. paid the cartels. Yeah. The doctor gave you that? Okay, yeah, you can go. No, 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 put it in the back. Keep that out. In the back, in the back. You can keep the medical stuff up. Whenever we take you to our, our processing center, since uh, you're either your wife or yourself, we're just going to stay with the kids. So I, I need you. Have you seen many guys from India coming? Recently? Uh, all, all na to be honest with you, all nationalities. To, I mean, to answer your question, yes, but uh, but they're all nationalities. But you're in you can't really talk to me much, can you? No. You can talk to a PAO. Or the sheriff. Yeah, sure. sheriff. <laughs> so what you're watching is Border Patrol. No, you can still do your B-roll. Okay. I'm just explaining what they're doing. So that device that he has, looks like a cell phone is they're actually taking a picture of their passport and that integrates all that information from that passport into Border Patrol system. And they're also taking a picture of the tag for that person's property. By the time they get to Border Patrol station, their info is already in their system at their station. And that's why I kind of made a hint that they're almost turned into TSA agents because that's what happens at an airport when you get on a plane. They take a picture of your passport, run it through the system, then you move on your way. Mission accomplished for them, though. They're in now. They're going to have an asylum hearing, whether it's right or wrong, in yeah. three, four, Why five. Why would that be wrong? Five years. Yeah. If it's not a legitimate asylum they're just going to dodge it and disappear into the country if it is then they'll get asylum papers and be good let me know who this called excuse chat privilege because they think they're crossing the border like this is funny crossing the border like this is funny x called me a libtard and said it was a, a zombie viewer kind of weird man yeah i look man they're kids okay and it's not like felix came here under similar conditions escaping like violence or poverty okay he's the referee dude Also, you were in a zombie were technically. People will never understand it. They won't. And this guy actually doesn't even do like a horrifyingly bad job of like dehumanizing uh, the, the undocumented people in their plight. What? Even XQ knows how shitty the immigration process is live soon doing visa stuff and a billion of paperwork. This is the most stressful week of the year. I also had, uh, I also told Chad that a majority go back to court and they said, sure, they do. I also told Chad that a majority go back to court and they said, sure, they do. Wait, they, but like they do. The numbers are like, incre it's incredibly rare for them not to appear in court. It is not even like the, it's like 98%. They literally do. Why wouldn't they? Most of the circumstance, most in most circumstances, the ones that don't actually show up literally don't uh, literally don't show up because like the government is like fuck them over. Like for example, when Ron DeSantis, Meatball Ron took people from Texas, Venezuelan migrants from Texas, and shipped them to Martha's Vineyard. He fucked over their legal asylum processes because those guys could have... E those guys had court dates to show up to. Okay? And when he moved them from Texas to fucking Martha's Vineyard, he ruined their chances of appearing in court. Luckily, I think NGOs stepped in at that point. 
But it was incredibly fucked up. That perspective is also part of the reason why I say legalize the process. Because if people had... If people had the legal opportunity... The legal opportunity to show up and have their day in court and go through the legal processes and, you know, fill up their paperwork and, and you know, live here freely without constantly looking over their shoulder and being fearful of ICE, they would do it. 98% of safe clients released from detention over the past three years have continued to appear for their scheduled court hearings. So when Donald Trump and others say like, oh, they don't actually appear in court, they don't actually appear in court, like they're fucking lying. Yeah, it's true. And guess what? Sometimes ICE will sometimes just be there in court waiting on people. Happen to my dad. Oh, they do so much awful shit. They do so much awful shit. They do worse shit than that. Remember what they originally did when they apprehended kids at the border? Under Donald Trump, when ICE apprehended kids at the border, they would put them in uh, child uh, slave facilities, you know, like the child facilities. And then they would call up their immediate family members and they would wait for their immediate family members to come in and try to get them so that they could arrest their immediate family members under the suspicion that they're probably also undocumented. Like, they set up children as a fucking trap, dude. Think about how unimaginably fucked that is. And they do that still. Oh, I worked in immigration court for a while. The process is called rolling, and it begins the process to eventually get to seek citizenship slash temporary status here in the U.S. This is more to verify that they say who they are and not cartel members or gang members from another country. You're very right, and they always appear on court on time. Yeah. In spite of the language barrier, too. That's, one of, that's why when I say, like, ICE is fucking Gestapo, I'm not, you know, I'm not joking. They are monsters, dude. They're fucking monsters, brother. They do that shit. Same fair, too. Because the ones that are going through the process legally, it's still waiting. This is not helping them at all. But yet they're going through the legal motions, and they're just being pushed aside because of this. If you do it the right way, it's going to take year, years, many years. Yeah. Well, yeah. So this is the fast, this is the only way to do it and save fast this track. lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure and this is what's never explained is that they'll have sort of a temporary status until mm -hmm. the asylum court hearing date, which is going to be years out. Right. If it's not a legitimate claim, which most of them aren't, <laughs> over 70% aren't, then they're not going to show up. And they're going to be in the United States sort of in this in-between status forever, mm -hmm. like actually an illegal status. Yeah. Now, if their asylum claim is real, it's legitimate, it will go through the courts, they'll be processed, and then on their pathway the to a U.S. citizen eventually. Right. So eventually. that's how it works, and that's what we're never explained to. Well, one out to. of ten. One out of ten, you're saying, okay. Is roughly what the numbers were before. I would imagine when you got two point some odd million <laughs> last year, that came across like this, <laughs> it might be less than that. Custom, customs, helicopter. And that was a lie. Oh, he just straight up lied. What the fuck's he talking about? Dan Crenshaw says about 80 to 90% of people seeking asylum do not have a valid claim. That's fucking completely, that is a complete fabrication. It is not true. Yeah, it's completely, completely false. It's 80 to 90% of those who don't want to, uh, uh, Dan Crenshaw said 80 to 90% of those do not have a valid claim. 
It's 20 to 30 percent of asylum requests that have been granted annually since 2009. But experts said that that does not mean the remaining 70 to 80 percent of cases are invalid. There are many reasons why an asylum case might otherwise be dismissed or closed. Like, for example, when they tighten up the fucking restrictions, like fleeing sexual violence used to be a valid case. Okay. It's completely in the eyes of whoever the fuck. Uh, whoever the fuck has decided, uh, it, it's no longer a valid reason. So under the Trump administration, if, uh, for example, Title 42 uh, got into place, uh, when Title 42 was established, 100% of asylum seekers that could have a valid reason to seek asylum in the United States of America were declared, uh, you know, invalid. Uh, affirmative asylum person living in the United States can voluntarily apply apply to asylum through this process defensive asylum a person can apply to asylum through this process to avoid being removed from the country Dan Crenshaw's office directed us to a report from the Executive Office of Immigration Review that looked at asylum cases that originated with a credible fear claim which falls under the defensive asylum process these claims originate from individuals who were apprehended by border patrol officers while attempting to enter the country without authorization were placed in an expedited removal process if a person in these circumstances claimed to have a credible fear of persecution or torture if they were to be removed from the country they meet with an asylum officer who determines whether to refer to their case to an immigration judge or full hearing once the case is referred to a judge a person must submit an application asylum to the court the Justice Department data shows that in the fiscal 2018, asylum was granted in 16% of the cases that originated from a credible fear claim. About 29% of requests were denied, and roughly 15% of those cases were closed for administrative or other reasons. In the remaining 40% of cases, individuals who were booked with a credible fear claim did not end up submitting an application for asylum. While just 16% of these cases resulted in asylum being granted, experts say there are many reasons why cases might be closed or requests might be denied, regardless of the merits of the claim. The outcome for asylum seekers continued to depend on the identity of the immigration judge assigned to hear the case. The New York Immigration Court led the country in having the widest disparity among judges serving on the same court. Depending upon the judge, denial rates range from 95% down to 3%. It's entirely in the hands of the fucking judge that decides, yeah, fuck it. I don't want any, I don't want any undocumented immigrants coming into the country and just fucking saying no every single time. Or people saying, or people having a much more understanding process. Because ultimately, remember, people are not leaving everything they know behind to be in an unsafe situation if the situation back at home is significantly worse. Pierce said this group could include individuals who apply for other benefits before an immigration court at the same time they sought asylum and were granted those other benefits instead in the 15% of cases that were closed for unspecified reasons. Similar points were raised by experts who consulted in our 2018 fact check of a similar claim from, uh, claim from Sessions. Uh, law professor Fordham Law School said that cases can be dismissed for a number of reasons unrelated to the merits of an individual's claim. Many cases are denied for procedural reasons not related to the merit of the claim or because the applicants are underrepresented or poorly represented and therefore don't have a chance to make their case in an effective way. That's the other part. Because it's like they don't have the paperwork right. It's like thinking about all of the instances where like uh, an eviction was served through a court and... Um, you know, you're working, so you couldn't show up to the eviction hearing. And then, you know, it favors your... Um, the, the court proceedings, of course, always favor uh, the, the landlord. Did you say you can't believe everything? People shouldn't run away from their home country to the U.S., but fight to make their country better? Oh, my God, I hate you so much, dude. You, I, you don't understand how fucking... How, how like, violently stupid you are. Jesus Christ, dude. Easy for you to say, you dumb shit. You fucking living in Iowa, cocksucking motherfucker. You don't know anything. Shut the fuck up. Just fix your country, forehead, he says. This is, like, literally just 
is this is stupider than fucking people being like, just buy a house if you're homeless. Like this is that on like an additional layer. How about you fix America? You, can you? Can you fix America? Dumb bitch. Imagine saying that when, like, America is also, like, most... Also, they got fucked by America and their country. They're trying to make it to the Imperial Corps. Exactly. That's the other hilarious part about this because it's like... Dude, why don't you fix the country that we fucked? You know what I mean? I hate that. You need immediately like a like a double dose of empathy just just directly fucking planted in your spine. What's wrong with fighting for your country, he said. That's not, that's not the point, you idiot. That's so crazy, man. That's why we made America that exact reason. You don't get it. Why hide your identification if you're a good person? People shouldn't run away from their home country to the U.S. But the fight to make their country better was wrong with fighting for your country. Is that what I said? I didn't say it's wrong to fight for your country to try and make it better. Um, by the way, here's another ironic take. Okay? Here's another ironic take. The most effective way to make your country better is by literally pumping it full of American dollars. Because a lot of these immigrant workers that come into the United States have family that's still back home. And they give them economic opportunity. Like, this is the one area where, I hate to admit this, but neoclassical uh, econ boys are not incorrect when they talk about uh, immigration and opening up immigration. They're not wrong. They are correct when they say that uh, immigrants actually end up, one, being a gigantic benefit for the U.S. economy, but also a gigantic benefit for the economy of the nation that they're coming from. I'm not being a bad chatter. I'm just talking and questioning. My bad. No, you didn't just talk and question. You cynically, it, one, you first cynically implied that like the, the person who hid their identification, you thought that they hid their identification, assumed that, and said that they were a bad person. Then you said... People shouldn't run away from their home country to the U.S., but to fight to make their country better. It is an unimaginably privileged position. You are being bitch-made. Okay? It is an unimaginably privileged position to just be so... Like, to look at people who very clearly have left uh, their, their way of existence and their lives uh, behind to come to the United States of America... And you turned around and said, yeah, why did they do that? They should just fix their country. Did he unironically type resist, get shot easy on 2-7? What the fuck? Yeah. Where? Do you need to create inflation by giving out free money only for people who rely on government aid? What about helping the working class? Vice president is like, clap. Resist, get shot easy. Tell people what they want to hear. They're so dumb they believe it. He's probably talking about fucking Ashley Babbitt, by the way. Or some shit. I don't know. Or wait. is he? You think he's talking about fucking... What were we talking about? Even then, it's a yikes, but... I hope he's not talking about Tyree Nichols. You think he's talking about Tyree Nichols? February 7th? Is that what we were covering?
I'm sure you guys sitting at home, never leaving your computers, knows more than the man who lives it every day. I mean, I'm not an undocumented immigrant, but I can tell you that as someone who is a, you know, legal uh, first generation, natural born U.S. citizen, an anchor baby, even for me to come to the United States of America, I know more about uh, not just the immigration process, but like not the immigration process necessarily, but but the the uh, difficulties of just like literally uprooting yourself. And I am profoundly fortunate in comparison to those people. Okay, so I do know more about uh, this at least one aspect of this than you do certainly and and certainly that fucking hog does it's also funny because like people people will be like why don't you leave america if you hate it so much and then also simultaneously they're like why don't you stay in whatever country you're at and fix it. Yeah, like an individual has the capacity to fix like centuries of fucking Western exploitation, colonial subjugation, all that sort of stuff. Just fix it, dog. I don't get it. This makes sense now. They got through this little gap yeah. because the fence on the other side is You super can dig small. under it. But it's even like an easy ladder to get over it, right? Well, you don't even need a ladder for this one. Oh, you just dig right under. You can dig right under it. I'll show you a place where... Uh... When we get up here, where the wash is undercut underneath. So that. if the fence was in that spot right there, there's no way they'd get through. No, they'd still be walking a, down the middle. Because that's a that's a family. Like it yeah. seemed like a. I mean, who knows? But if nice. they were looking at walking all the way up, you're talking a minimum of two days. So how many border patrol guys here? Well, say on this last ten miles we've been on the fence. Just those two. Just those two. Yeah. See how they can just walk right through over there? Okay, yeah, let's take a look. Just walk over here and you're good to go. Right. And you can tell it's being used. You can tell by the tracks, the blanket on the ground. Yeah, that's easy. The oh, coyotes wait, can wait. literally just put drop them right here and say walk over and call 911. Yeah. Easy. That's what we're dealing with. That's why the, the kids' shoes were wider and cleaner than mine. Yeah. taking you is where a lot of them come up and they're told to follow this mountain range oh, look at the fence going up the mountain there yeah because we've experienced through past administrations and their policies uptick in smuggling happening through these desert areas there's been a number of these stations that have been put up by border patrol so all you got to do is push that red button and rescue would come one hour yeah. Because in the summer, how hot is this? It can get up to 115 ambient air temperature, maybe 120. But the ground temperature will be probably 134. So is the traffic relax a lot, the border, the crossings a lot in the summer? It's more of a wintertime thing? Not really. They just come across at night, and then they hold up during the day. So right now, because it's cooler, it's winter, they're going during the day? During the day. And they'll still hold up in the washes and try to stay warm at night. This is the El Camino del Diablo, one of the passes where individuals will traverse across the border. So the scouts live in Mexico and just come back and forth all the time? And oh, they stay up in the mountain. For what, weeks? Oh, yeah. And groups that come across bring food and water and whatever else they need. They find a location up in the mountains where they can monitor and have radio access because they carry radios with them. They carry solar panels with them when they get up there. And that's how they get paid, is by each group that gets through. So they run a, like a tally book. All right, guys, it's almost the end of the daylight hours. Unfortunately, we didn't get back into Yuma. That was the goal, right, to show the hospital? It was. Well, for you, it was. Okay. I mean, anybody can, but, shoot, a, anybody can shoot a hospital. Okay, the story what? of the hospital, though, you, you uh, had something to say. <laughs> well, one of the, when you look at the ancillary impacts that a community has, part of that is the fact that 
Yuma County, 310,000 people came through here, give ups. So we have one hospital that services all of Yuma County. It was a $23 million impact on their operations, having to deal with illegal immigrants that had to come into the hospital to be treated for anything from dialysis to health issues that they had brought with them that were never treated, down to the fact that it was even impacting the new. How about like in the Philippines where neoliberal policies force the working populace to work in other countries, making labor our main export and causing a shortage of professional workers? Brain drain is a huge detriment to nation building, but I understand why the workers would want to move to other countries given that our labor laws are crap. Yeah, dude, in the Philippines, it's, that's, the, that's the reason why people left the Philippines, dude. Like, dude, you do understand that uh, the, the, the thing that you just described, the thing that you just described is literally also almost in like almost identical to the reason why people in fucking Honduras and, and Guatemala are leaving to come to the United States. You get that, right? Like you have to understand that. My point always is nobody's going to want to fucking leave their home nation if their home nation is not in a, uh, in a desolate condition, robbed by imperial superpowers historically. Like, destabilization and having no opportunities are the reasons why uh, people uh, engage in the brain drain. Like, you think Filipinos want to fucking work on cruise ships their whole lives? Like, no, they just have no opportunity. Yeah, I get that. I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah. That's the other aspect of how... Uh, that, that is the other aspect of how you, uh, I guess, eliminate a, a, a steady flow of migrants into your country. If you don't want it, if you genuinely consider it to be like a, a, a massive burden on your country, which it isn't. But... All the Filipinos in my WoW Guild farm gold. They give us a discount and <laughs> for guild members. Yeah. A steady flow of migrant workers is an intentional, intended consequence of permanent imperialism. You ruin these countries. You can rob them of their natural resources, okay? You can uh, uh, debt trap them through the IMF and set conditions for how they can use the money that you loan them when they're desperate. Then turn around and engage in brain drain where you pick and choose their, their uh, top candidates in their labor force while simultaneously, uh, you know, using their, uh, the rest of the labor force to your will to do your bidding at a massively, massively lower price, outsourcing uh, the manufacturing that you otherwise were working on domestically. Natal ICU, the hospital had to cancel appointments because they were overloaded with dealing with the immigrant crisis and the hospital was not getting reimbursed at all from the federal government. Now, you wonder why your hospital bill is so big. It's because a hospital has to share that cost with you as a consumer to fill that gap. So you're looking at tying up not only your law enforcement resources because we're out here having to fill that gap, but you're tying up EMS from different... Bitch, you can't do anything. You don't have to fill that gap. Shut the fuck up. This is just like for personal pleasure. Also, American healthcare in Yuma is not fucked because of undocumented immigrants. I'm losing my fucking mind, dude. Like, what, a, what an insane approach. What an absolutely psychotic way to look at this situation. Yeah, dude, it's the undocumented immigrants. That's why we can't have free healthcare. That's crazy. XQ had the same take as you on this one, Lamont. Yeah, I'm glad that even XQC recognizes how fucked this take is. 
different communities. You're tying up the hospital in bad space that the local community cannot now utilize because they're busy taking care of this issue. And with the federal government saying that it's their responsibility, well, you know, put away your personal and political rhetoric and your innuendos, get down to business, pay your bills. It had, I'm average eating about 1.2 million a year in housing illegals that have committed state crimes and get reimbursed five cents on the dollar. Okay, so Yuma County has to eat that cost. Every citizen in Yuma has to eat that cost. Remember, every one of these persons that are coming in and impacting our resources are now going into the interior of the United States. They're coming to your neighborhood, they're coming to your county, and it's gonna be, it's no longer a border crisis, it's a nation crisis. It's definitely a crisis. It is, that's, it is a That's crisis. the field down here. Well, Sheriff, yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. That was awesome. I'm going to finish this video on the top of these rocks. Well, you have fun if you fall. I might catch you. <laughs> I'll be back in uh, two minutes. Okay. There's a radio up here. A handheld radio? Handheld with, a, with an antenna and a solar panel. Oh, uh, hang on. <laughs> we have Buckeye cameras out here, so it might be a repeater for it yeah that's when you hear camera uh yeah, yeah it's not a radio it's a repeater all right guys want to close on a few final thoughts here that was an absolutely unbelievable uh just bizarre crazy experience today and i can't even capture it in words or through the camera. Obviously this is a super political topic. It has been forever. It's been used as leverage by each party, um, but no matter where you stand on this thing, it is a humanitarian crisis. It is very serious. It is unsustainable. I can definitely say that. And even if say you're the most pro open border person in the world where there should be no borders and everyone should be everywhere, um, you'd be horrified by the sex trafficking, by the power of the cartel. It's absolutely dysfunctional what's going on here at this border. So today was just one piece. Loved it. Loved that we looked at this entire situation and we didn't go, hey man, we should just do, <sighs> we should just like ease this process, legalize it. Don't fly this hacker leak Republican emails praying that you see this.